Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement a save and load button for the game that we're building here called Minesweeper. So we're going to create the database access object now. So that would be a good folder for utilities and I don't see utilities here yet. So let's do a right click and choose an add a new folder. I'm going to name it utility and then inside there we're going to add a new class. And so that class is going to be a new uh, database access object. So I think games DAO seems like a good name. So we're going to need two different methods for this uh, DAO. One called save game, another one called load game. So this will be the bare minimum of how to make this work. We'll just have two functions. So if I'm going to save something, I need a piece of data to save. So let's create something called a game object. And game object will be defined here in another file. So the game object's job is just to hold the information that's go in to the, goes in and out of the database. So we'll have two properties. We'll have the ID and we need a string. So I think we can name the string anything we want. I'm going to call it JSON string. And then we have to have a constructor too so we can add and remove uh, these things from a list. So we've got ourselves the entire game object now. So I can close this. And let's come back into our uh, methods that we were working on with the database. So we're going to get this thing called game object and then we're going to put it into the database. Now let's see, we're expecting to return a boolean value. So that's why he's got red underlined there text. So we're going to have a return. And for right now, I'm going to put in return true. So that way we assume that we succeed. We'll change that later. So when we work with the database, we need something called a connection string. So we will define a string and we'll call it that. So let's go to the test database, it looks like. We'll go to test and let's look for connection string. And there it is, it's down in the properties. So let's uh, right click and copy and bring it back into our method here and paste it. So that whole long complicated string is going to connect us to the database. So after the connection string, let's come up with a query string. So it's gonna be another string and we'll call it query string. Now this is the SQL command. So this is the format of a SQL string. We're going to insert into the table and then we'll put in the, the column names and then the values. So let's check out what those column names are. So let's go back here. It was called game string and ID. So I don't have to worry about ID. I can just put in game string. Then the second parameter is going to be an at game string. So this is using prepared statements. So we define a placeholder here and then we'll add a value to it later. So the statement that we're looking for next is we're going to be using a connection. So we'll have a using block and SQL connection is how you uh, import this. That's the class name. So we'll create a new SQL connection and the parameter that it needs is the SQL connection string that we defined up here on line 13 or 14. Of course we have to import this so let's check the using statement as well. So the next statement is we're going to do another using statement. And this time we're going to be using a command, a SQL command. So we'll create a new instance of it. And then it requires two parameters. One is the connection string and the other is the query string. And let's see, what's the matter here? It looks like we have a problem. It says argument two cannot convert from string to the SQL connection. All right, so he's still not happy. It says uh, you're trying to get a connection string. Oh, okay, well I did that wrong. So the connection is this thing right here, SQL connection. So let's copy and overwrite that one. And now are we happy? Okay, computer, you're happy. Good, let's keep going. All right, so this next statement is going to associate this game string object that we put into our query string with an actual value. So it's called SQL command dot parameters dot add. And so we'll identify that game string is the item that we're talking about. Then the next item is to tell it what kind of a data type that we're associating with. So this is a SQL database type text. So then we want to be able to associate a value with this. So we'll say dot value equals. Now where is this value coming from? Well, it's the parameter called game object and game object has a string. Now there's one other thing that we could do to modify this. This uh, pathway here is a little bit longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna select these first two items and delete. And then we should get red text. Sure enough, it says underline. 
and it says I don't know what that is so let's do import or using system data so it'll add a new line up here and this will shorten up this line now we should have a successful association here because we have a string coming in here and we're associating it with this parameter so now we're going to get started with the actual execution so we need to tell it to make the open connection to our SQL database and then don't forget to close it and in between these we'll put our command so if everything works great this will run however we could probably add a try catch here because sometimes connections don't work and sometimes our queries are written incorrectly <laughs> imagine that to make a syntax mistake on a SQL statement so to make sure that this doesn't uh, crash our program let's put a try and a catch around it so that way we can make sure that it's all successful now, we have promised that we are going to return a Boolean value on save game. So a Boolean value could be a true or false. So let's say true if it's successful. So let's, pre let's create a value now in here called success. So success will initially be set to false. And if this database is executed correctly in the try statement, we can assume that it worked. So we'll set it to true. And then we'll do uh, a return at the bottom that says we'll return success. Now inside the catch statement, we're interested in handling any errors that occur. And so we will do a console. If we had a console we could get to, and then we would see a, a message that says failure. But more importantly, let's set the debug to right line. So we'll have to import debug, which is part of system diagnostics. And then I'm going to e.message print that, which is going to tell us if there was a problem, it'll give us more information. All right, so that kind of gets us to the point where we have a success and a save game statement. So maybe this is a good spot to stop. We're going to take the next video to finish off with load game and then put some methods into our uh, actual buttons. And uh, we'll continue on with this process of creating and saving a game.